Hey guys, welcome to Jerry's Live. It is 2020 and we're back. I am, of course, I'm Amy Gardner Dean, your host, and we have an awesome season plan for you this year. In case you are new, which I, I'm not sure where you would have picked us up, but regardless, welcome. Uh, this is a show that we do. It's absolutely free. It's brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. It is live every Tuesday, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time, um, other than, I guess, once in a while, the occasional holiday, which we'll let you know ahead of time, January through the end of November. So it's an awesome way to see some new art products that maybe you've never tried, that you've thought about, learn techniques, uh, do, I mean, we have demos. We're going to have a lot of really awesome guests this year from different vendors. So we'll be learning a lot about other products like we've had Jimmy Leslie in the past. So we'll have other companies like Colart coming in again this year. Um, and it should be lots of fun. So buckle up, we are going to get started. Uh, today is JL133. So if you wanna follow along at home to learn anything about these products, you'll go to our website, www.jerrysartorama.com there will be a search box at the top on the website. You will type in JL133. That's a keyword that will bring up the list of products that we're going to show. Um, I might have included a couple other things, but I'm sure the girls can uh, pick a link up. I just I had a sketchbook at home that I tried with uh, the fountain pen and it was really juicy on it, Amanda. So, uh, so hopefully it will be, I'll, I'll kind of show you some of the fun that I had with that. So, each of these January episodes are modeled after a single kind of thought. Um, I feel like as artists, a lot of us uh, get down in the dump sometimes. Stuff happens. Holidays are depressing. Things happen to friends, family, pets, all that. Uh, sometimes you're just overworked. You're overtired. You're stressed. You want to spend some time in your studio or in your workplace uh, workspace that you've got and then all you've got is an hour and by the time you get in there you're not sure what you want to do you know that setting up is going to take a while cleaning up is going to take a while uh, and all that and then by then you're just so frustrated that you're like I'm not even gonna bother starting well that's understandable but it's not always a good thing so this month is going to be dedicated just to taking products that you have on hand or taking simple things that you can carry with you and just doing what I'm calling immediate art, whether that's painting, whether that's sketching, just, you don't have to have a plan. You don't have to come up with 10 different subject matter and go print them off on the computer to draw from. You look and you grab stuff that's around you. Um, you grab supplies that you already have and you just make art. The point isn't for the purpose of creating anything that's like, some piece for the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's not about uh, even it being good enough to show anybody. This is about just getting in there, practicing, training yourself through doing this, that it's okay just to pick something up and spend 20 or 30 minutes. So each of these episodes, we're going to do that. Now, kind of this episode is an ink pen drawing demo, and it's going to take two products that we've got that I've not really used a lot of because I want to try them out and like fountain pens, one of them is a fountain pen, always wanted to draw with a fountain pen, but I know from having used dip pens in the past, sometimes the points can be kind of weird and not so much tedious to learn to draw with, it's easier to write with them, but even just kind of get the wear on kind of that side of that pen that you tend to use. Um, and really get to know it, kind of learn its uh, behavioral quirks um, and use it for sketching. So uh, because uh, like most pens, it's permanent. So that's why this is just immediate sketching. It, if it doesn't work, we can throw it away. So, um, so we've got a new product that's called the Golden Rit Sketch Writer. That's what we're going to be using. It's a fountain pen. Um, I actually have it in the box just like you would get it because I was curious how what all comes with it um, how do you actually set it up because I've never used a fountain pen I mean thankfully this takes cartridges um, and you can it's got a little thing you can siphon it out so we'll look at that when we're playing with it I did do some practice drawings with one of the two we've got one that's called the Victoria and then 
we've got another one that's, do you remember what this one is Rockwell. called, Kelly, Katie? The Rockwell. Um, we had a Rockwell already with ink already in it, so I used that while I was waiting for the Victoria to come in, and I didn't want to specifically open that, but it's the same point size. Really enjoyed using it. Um, and, and it's just, it's a nice weighty pen. It's, yeah. It feels good in the hand, so I'm really curious to see what the Victoria is going to be like uh, in difference. Now, the Super Black are permanent pens. We're going to... The Victoria is a little bit lighter. Yes. And it has the screw off cap. Right. And that's what. a smaller what, hand, they say. Well, and not even a smaller hand, but like if you know that you're bad about misplacing stuff, the screw off cap screws on the other end so you don't accidentally put it down somewhere and go on where this has a nice click and clicks on. But two different times I found the lid over on the floor when I was working because I had just bumped it and moving it and holding the pen a little tight and it had slipped off. So. Um, but I don't think that's so I'm curious to see what the different sizes are in my hand and kind of and how it works And I'm curious to see what the screw top uh, Screw lid is like um, the super black there. This is the ultimate fine liner drawing set of eight So it's got point sizes all across the board from point 20 millimeter all the way up to a one millimeter and then a brush now personally I tend to use the uh, 0.50 mil millimeter just because I like that it's got enough substance but you can kind of turn it on edge a little bit and get a little bit finer line so we're going to use that as well today um, actually the drawing that I did for the episode advertisement was of my son and our new family member uh, who is a, a little pointer puppy with the super black so that was really fun let's see if you can what kind of where we're going to be because all right just so we can see so this was just done with super blacks no drawing underneath just going uh with sketching with the pen um you know lighter pressure where i'm wanting to do those under drawings you can kind of see the head shape i didn't get right right away but just quick thin lines you really can't tell uh, once you start kind of putting some line work in for the shadow. So that's something that we're going to do some stuff like that. Now, I didn't want to bring pictures. I just brought some weird items from my office because I collect odd things. And Katie's laughing. I've got a moth. I've got a little bird nest with a bird egg that had hatched and a feather shell, some other stuff so that you're seeing it just as I am. I've never drawn any of these things before. So I thought it would be fun just to to grab, like I'm wanting you to do, grab something that's sitting around that, that's, that's at hand um, and then use it. So, um, so today's the ink pen drawing demo. Next week is an oil painting study demo. Study is just blocking things in, getting the color idea, things like that. Um, media painting watercolor demo is the third week in January and then the fourth week is a charcoal pencil drawing demo. So you have been warned. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's get this open. Now I did do some sketches with the, I was really curious with this Lennox paper and the Strathmore paper that I put on the list. I think I had Lennox paper on the list immediately and then it went out of stock. So, but I did take the paper and I did try it with some different things because I was really curious about surfaces and how the fountain pen um, worked. So this is, if you'll put that, um, they're the Lennox cotton with the sketch writer. Um, one side is turned on the kind of the fatter part. The other side is flipped over and just using kind of the tip for fine lines just to see what that would do. And this is the tip as well. Uh, for drawing on this, because this paper has some tooth and it's kind of fuzzy. So there was a little bit of skip with kind of pulling it across here. When I used the tip there, I didn't experience that skip. So I went and just went through some of the pads that I had at the house because I was curious what, um, this is Stonehenge White by comparison. Same movements, same pen, same point size. Uh, did some of the really fine lines with it flipped. That worked really well. Um, kind of with this, with the co natural cotton paper, because of the way it absorbs, it seems to kind of skip a little bit, kind of as that 
ink comes out. So knowing that, I wanted to try it on the Stonehenge Craft because that's got slightly smoother feel, but it's a very thick kind of substantial paper. So you can see you could get some really nice little fine tight lines, but there was a little bit of that skipping with the cotton. Okay, so let's use, we're gonna just use the Strathmore Bristol because I think that's a paper most of us would tend to just kind of have in-house. Um, and let's try some super blacks on it first. Ladies, if anybody's got any questions, go ahead and shout them out. Um, if you're new to the show, we have Amanda on Facebook. Amanda is the assistant manager of customer service. So she's awesome. And then we've got Frida who um, works with our retail division and she is kind enough to Tuesdays be our um, YouTube Moderator. maintainer extraordinaire. Keep, with the most keeps, that's right. She keeps, keeps everybody in line. So, um, and then we've got Katie behind the camera. Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. So first let's try the super black. Anybody got any, uh, like votes for the, the shell, the nest, the butter or the moth feather, feather. whatever, the, the regular feather. Okay, well, that would work because I think I can put it right whoop, there. How about that? And then we'll just do the drawing underneath. So first we're going to do use the super black and then we'll get to the fountain pen because that was my favorite. So I want to play with it. All right. Um, for point sizes, first let's show everybody what you can expect. This is the point two. It's going to be hard to see because it's so fine. I can actually zoom in a little okay. bit more. Just so people know, because not everybody uses the same pen size, but then some people that are illustrators will actually use multiples. See, so yeah, that's just a little bit easier to see. Oops. Oh, you. there you go. Perfect. All right. And ladies, what is the price on this? I can't remember off the top of my head. It's a very inexpensive set for pounds. some pens. Yes, it is. Eight seventy nine. <laughs> okay. Well, that's Sorry. a bargain. The um, eight count set. I'm sorry, eleven ninety nine. Okay. That makes more sense. And the um, still a good deal. Three pack is five twenty nine. Yeah, that's and this has eight pens, so um, so you can see this getting darker in progression, and is a really nice, pretty black. All right, point four five millimeter. Hey Ames. Yes, ma'am. What? Is the weight of the paper you're working on right now? Uh, it should be probably 90 pounds. Let's see. 100 pounds. It's a 100 pound paper, uh, 270 gram. So, and it's, and it's a, just a Bristol vellum. Ta -da. <laughs> um, it's got just a nice, um, fine kind of surface. It works really well with dry medium markers. Uh, because what it does, what it does with the markers is some papers will bleed with markers um, and technical pens, and this keeps nice crisp lines. Okay, so this is my favorite point size because you can see that's it's got a nice more even kind of that's I like that nice nice and dark yet uh, kind of fine enough. All right, last two, we've got the one millimeter, which is going to jump because we're going double. Which, if you're drawing on a larger scale, right, that's perfect. If you're doing something on like a 16 by 20, that may be favorable to this tiny one down here that's very faint and hard to see. Then this is the brush. You have to excuse my brush writing. Amanda would have been better for that. <laughs> okay, so on its side. Then it's got some nice 
kind of fine points. So it gives you a lot of different kind of fun things to play with, right? So uh, this is what we'll do. We'll move this up and put the feather here. And you're going to see it from slightly a uh, different angle than I will, right? Because you're seeing it from here. I'm seeing it, obviously, from the side. So just remember that before you. Mm. All right, let's see. What do we want? Uh, which one you think shows up? Well, I don't know. I think the .35 shows up pretty decently right here, don't you think? Mm -hmm. for, for that, it's not yeah, too, it's not too fine, but not too. Okay. All right, so let's actually, you know what, let's turn this, we'll do this. Flip it. I will not sing the Devo song that I want to. All right, so we're just gonna, from my vantage point, I'm gonna decide kind of where my line comes across for the tip of kind of the quill of this. Just draw, you don't have, have to, I, I, we've talked in drawing lessons before. If you're new, you may not be aware that we have a, a paper that they always attach to some, uh, basically a Google document that they always attach with our shows. And that's gonna have all of the shows that we've had so far from 2000 17, 2018, and 2019, 132 shows. I know. Katie just crossed her eyes like, what? <laughs> uh, so we've done all sorts of stuff, beginner drawing, all sorts of things. And in, the, we've, in this, we've talked about how to kind of use your whole arm and not do the kind of little scritchy, scratchy thing everybody always wants to do to make the line. Um, so if, if you're not familiar with our show, look at some of those... Um, show examples there's one that's chronological so you can see them if you like to binge watch start at the beginning i'm sorry there will be a lot of me um and then if you would rather go by topic i, I can grade on people's nerves that's what i've heard from my children um then you can uh kind of look by topic instead to decide kind of what your interests are okay so I'm just getting, I'm, this doesn't have to be perfect, remember, we're just trying to make sure we're getting in there, we're actually doing some work, right? This is a feather one of the dogs found on a hike, because there's this really nice nature preserve close by the office here, and we go over at lunch. And this is a red-tailed hawk feather, oops, now I've lost my... See, with that, I'm going back in to find this kind of little hole. I want to differentiate that. Also, kind of where this is crossed over. Amy, what size pen did you settle on? Was that uh, a 0.35 millimeter? 0.35 millimeter. There we go. And it's, oh, there we go. Thank you, Katie. It's easier to see on that side camera with your left hand. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't think no, about you're that. fine. Okay. And with this, I'm going to real quickly kind of decide where I want that edge of my feather to be. And I'm going to sketch it in. I can come back and change some things. line. You notice I don't necessarily stay in the same spot. That's from just kind of, I guess, being a painter, you kind of better work all over the place and kind of evaluate as you go. Um, but you can see how nice, I mean, these are really black for this being just a a little, you know, fine liner pen. It's fantastic. Nice and black. Um, yeah, this really functions more as a whole unit. So I'm not gonna, I'm putting the 
kind of giving you the idea of all those little kind of feather lip ribs, but I'm not going to put them all on there. Because this part's frayed, obviously. From Betsy on YouTube would like to know what is the difference between these pens and the Microns? Uh, it, it's a slightly different feel to the nib. That's a good question. What's the difference between these and the Microns? Slightly different feel to the nib. Um, I have not tried washes with these. Uh, I use Microns a lot um, for doing drawings and then doing watercolor over it. Uh, and if you're in the Facebook Live group that we've got, I sometimes post stuff like commissions that I'm working on. I use a lot of Microns just because that's what I guess has always been on the market. Um, and I tend to buy, a, like when I go, I buy five or six of it at a time so I can get those open stock. Uh, I think these are, the black I think is a little bit kind of warmer than I think the Pigma Microns are looking to me, but I'm a color nut. To, me, to most people they're like, it's the same black. This uh, looks a little more sepia to me but it's, but that's just me being a weird color version. So, um, but that's with it being really light here and, and also the LED lights, which I don't, I don't have at home. So it may very well be the, the actual lighting just giving that appearance. Um, it feels very similar. It's maybe just a little bit softer. Um, I would need to try them with, um, washes over them to say they 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 say that they are waterproof and they're permanent and they're archival so and acid free so those are the things that you you know if you do microns you enjoy that in a micron so um but it's just that right for right now these come in sets you cannot get them open stock yet so if you use a lot of one size that's going to kind of i guess be the downfall of them you mentioned that the tips are a little bit softer than Micron, possibly. Have you done any stippling with these? Um, let me try the five. I don't typically do stippling because it's, um, I'm not, I'm not the most impatient person, but I like, I like line work from being trained with illustration. And if you're on a deadline, doing, doing pointillism is not your, I don't know because I haven't really I don't think I've used the what it reminds me of is didn't Sharpie used to have a fine liner or, or, or um, paper mate that was black and it had a little silver thing it's a little bit firmer than that like it feels like it's a, a better nylon and it's definitely blacker than that pen was my head's not in the way is it okay good. it's keeping it shaped really well for the pointillism I mean that's pretty consistent. That's yeah, pretty hard on pens too. Uh, I, I'm not feeling any difference and I'm, I'm not hitting it really hard. But the nice thing is with this, you don't have to. It's, it's the, and, and which could be this and it could be also the paper that's taking the ink nicely. A combination of both. Yeah, it's something where you would want it, you would want to get it to, of course I put the pen down I was using. Uh, you would want to get them and try them on whatever paper you typically use and then actually kind of see what the difference is. I'm just, there's a little bit of like little fuzzies I can see on this. The little kind of barbs that hold those feather stands together. Uh, all right, so now I'm going to do the, the kind of color that comes across this. Just because that's a, like a hawk feather thing, right? Everybody knows that's uh, one of the kind of identifying <coughs> factors of that. So we're just going to come across. This is not at the same line, obviously, as what the feather, how those little kind of single pieces kind of stick together. So we're, we're just doing it to give a generalized color that to the viewer of your art will read as Those stripes which is harder for you guys see it really dark at least the monitor that I've got 
is showing the colors really dark because of what this angle is. From this angle, it's very washed out for me, so. this up in just a second. Does anybody have any other questions about the um, the super black fine liners before we kind of swing in? I'll finish this and we'll, we'll give that fountain pen a try because I think that's the kind of fun thing. I don't think a lot of people have drawn with fountain pens so it would be kind of fun to give it a shot together. I'm guessing that's a no. We have a lot of our regulars back. Is everybody? I have a question. Yes. Why is acid free an important part of a pen component? Okay, so acid free in pens are very important because if this has acid in it and I'm drawing on this, what is it going to do over time? Eat away. Right. Right. It's going to start discoloring that paper it's gonna start breaking down those fibers, damaging those fibers that are in the paper right where that pen is, anywhere it's hit and then bled out just that little tiny bit, depending on the type of pen. And that is not good for artwork. It's fine, you know, if all you're doing is art to art, if you have a ballpoint pen in front of you and you got some time and you just wanna sketch, there's nothing wrong with that. However, how is that gonna hold up over time and or not fade or not, um, you know, potentially damage to the paper, who knows. But if you want something, especially if you want to practice with things that are archival, so that when you do have time to really sit down and dedicate, devote kind of to your, um, to actually being able to work, you're already used to using these, right? So it's not that kind of chore of, you know, every time I pick up a different pen or marker, then it's that, oh yeah, this is the brand. And these are kind of the other weird working qualities that make it a little different than brand X, Y, or Z. So I have to remember that, uh, you know, I have to work like this. If I put it at this angle, it doesn't work like another thing I use. Or if I put it at this angle, it doesn't, you know. So you don't have that kind of continued kind of learning curve with something like, obviously, a ballpoint pen is extremely different than a, than a you know, a drawing pen like, a technical pen like these, the disposable technical pens. All right, we good? We good. All right, so that is super black. Obviously, you know, the that was the 3.5 millimeter. If we, you, it, there's nothing to say you can't go in with something. Here's our one millimeter if we wanna really go in and kind of darken and reinforce some of the lines with just, you know, one or two strokes with that larger pen. You can see all of a sudden that got way blacker, right? I mean, you can, you could do that. That's the beauty of kind of a set like this is you've got the ability to change point sizes. You could do your kind of layout drawing in something super fine. So it has very little tiny lines. So it would be much, you know, less easy to see um, when you do your other drawing over it. Like if you're drawing, like the picture of my son and uh, Busy Bee. So it gives you kind of some different options. All right. All right. So. Goodbye, feather. Uh, now let's give this a go. So I'm going to have to figure out. How's this? And if I have dangerous yeah, I enough think. nails to, I got it. All right. Oh, it's got a nice little box. All right. 
so we've got the little filler so if you've got ink you can actually pull it up into that um, and put it that this cartridge in the pen itself so you could use you know multiple colors let's say um, you like to use different colors for writing, different colors for sketching. Fountain pen ink is going to be dye-based, folks, which, although, uh-oh, Amanda. Yes. Sorry, no, no. backtrack to the super yeah, yeah. pens. Um, the best way to store those pens, you think, on your side, on their sides? Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't know. I would imagine I store so. them on their sides, but it's just because I've got them in, like, yeah, I always, have one of my purse either sitting yeah. up or depending on if there's pockets. Depends on not I literally I've got I know I have two Pigma microns in my purse like this. They work fine coming out. But again, that could be brand dependent. I haven't had any problems with the super black and I've had them kind of thrown in my purse or in my bag or kind of laying on the desk. We've had them straight up here, we've had them upside down right. and flat. So something that's like this where it's actual yeah loose and not in with that nib you know going all the way back that might be a little bit more uh problematic so to speak um i need my reading glasses again i've not had problems with them now that being said if the ma if there is a way to store them the manufacturer will typically tend to give that information to whoever's selling them to have it online not i mean some brands will say of, of markers or things like that will oh, say how to store it some won't yeah. so typically if they're not saying i don't think that that's probably a problem okay so this like i'm Ooh. not careful with my pens and it hasn't had a problem with it so i like this uh the acrylic color through it yeah i like that blue all right so um directions Who's, who's playing with their stuff without their direction? All right. Um, huh? Do you have directions? Uh, I, I don't see any other than just the thing on the back here. So I'm going to... I know that we're, we're putting some together to put online. Yeah, we have videos online on how okay. to clean it, how to... Um, all kinds of things with it. Just having used uh, code doors, I'm... I mean, assuming you times, do this. So, yeah. Okay. So it opens up. Now, um, I, I, yes. What were you say? Check to see if there's a spare in the pen body. There's not. Okay, well, no. Hold on. Yeah, nope, there is. there is. Okay. <laughs> All right. So there's a, there's four, four of these little ink containers. One's already down in there. I'm guessing because you probably need to put the other one on top of it. You don't. Do you? You okay. can. Okay. But you, it's not a so so you would just take it and actually push it up in the pen then probably. Yes. The, the pointed end yes. up. Okay. Look at me. I've never done this. It can't be that hard. Okay. It sounded like it made a little pop. So I'm hoping mm -hmm. that's the case. Okay. So all the ink that's in these is golden red ink. And as I was starting to say before, uh, but then there was a good question. So we needed to kind of wait for a minute. The ink in these are going to be dye based, not shellac based, because shellac dries, and if you get shellac in nibs, whether they're just regular cheap nibs or whether they're something like this titanium nib, it is going to dry and it'd be almost impossible to get that ink out. Uh, you would need to soak it, and depending on what's kind of behind that nib, it could damage that. So, unfortunately, fountain inks tend to be dye based. This isn't a problem because this type of sketching and stuff, you're doing sketching, you're doing, um, might be in a sketchbook. You can mat and frame them under UV glass. That will help with fading. But dye-based are, are, you know, can tend to, with some dye-based based inks, can tend to fade some over time. Okay? So, but it doesn't have the particles or the shellac that makes something... Um, where it's going to damage that nib. So that's that's the one kind of sad thing about a, a fountain pen that you don't have with a dip pen. But the beauty of this is it's already loaded and ready to go. A dip pen, if you travel, you would have it everywhere. At least I would have it everywhere. 
just the ink I'm sure wouldn't make it <laughs> before you even got the pen out. So, um, so, and the colors that these come in are amazing. That, uh, the, the reddish one, what is, I can't remember. It's not the, is it burnt carmine? Burnt carmine. <gasps> so pretty. All right. Amanda, how do you prime these? Cause I'm, I've got no clue. Just gotta write what happened. I may not. Do you have one that is primed? Yes. Oh, nope. Woohoo! Okay. came out. I will yeah. take it and do it for you. Oh, no. Okay. Wow. <coughs> this is nice. Yeah. Look at that. There's some beautiful ink colors. That's the this is the This one. is the black, and I think I did have the deep sapphire. Oh, no, I had the smoke in this one. I got uh, to use the sapphire ink the other day because Amanda had some hanging around. This and is the it smoke. is so gorgeous. Um. All right, so I'm liking that. I, I, this is lighter. It is lighter, and it does have to screw on and off. But I tell you what, that's nice. Still, oh yeah. Okay, oh, so we that. will feature we will feature this ink in another episode because they've got these cool glass blown dip pens that have a spiral that are just simply stunning. So we'll do that maybe in uh, February or March, but these are the inks that you can get in e either as cartridges for these little things where you can put them in your pen or that you can pull up in this, you know, where you can, can do cartridges and or that. And it has all these beautiful colors and this is just that burnt so stunning. And that Midnight That's Sapphire too. Yeah, and the black Actually, the black beautiful. lagoon has a yeah, nice no has a nice blue undertone. Yeah, the color the undertones and stuff are gorgeous. And the nice thing about these is they're water resistant, but they're not waterproof because obviously it'd have to be shellac based if they're waterproof, right? Which would gum up your pen. You could take this, do some sketching, and then use a very lightly wetted brush to kind of pull out some of the stuff as washes, right? So that would be really kind of Fun and nice. All right, so uh, what do we want to do next? Do we want to do the shell? Do we want to? I think the nest would be kind of fun, don't you? Lots of people asking about the nest. Okay, well, we'll just do the nest then. All right. So there's a nest of a little egg in there. Um, and again, I'm seeing that at an angle. And that is a, I believe, a pileated woodpecker feather. Specific. Uh, I, I had ornithology in college, so, and I'm, I'm weird about that kind of stuff. All right, so, I'm so excited. I like this pet. I'm so excited to see how this does. All right, so we're just going to sketch, right? Okay. Oh, this is nice. It comes out of this nib, like, super... I think that other nib was slightly larger. I think I grabbed the wrong uh, out of those pens that they um, that you handed me, Katie. I think yeah. I grabbed the slightly larger um, nib, which works nice. But oh, this one's like this one is perfect for my kind of. There's four sizes. I think there are two. Yeah, four. Okay. Slightly more towards you, just a little bit. Yeah. Then go closer. The better? Yeah. All right. So I see it at kind of a. Perfect. Slightly different angle than you guys do. And then there's this little cracked hole in it. Did you talk at all about the titanium nib? I said that it was titanium. Okay. But it is. It's a really exciting nib. Um, Amanda is very excited about the titanium nib. I have been waiting for these pins an unbelievable amount of time. That's she hilarious. Really has. Um, that's that's hilarious. a titanium nib yes. making. Yeah, yeah, they have been. That titanium nib is different than most fountain pens, and it has a beautiful flex to it. So when I, I like to do calligraphy with mm. it and so I can get a lot of line variation with it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and you don't find that a lot in um, this range of like price-wise pins. Really? Yeah, I was really hype about it. So in other words, it's a very 
fancy nib for the money. You're getting a big bang for your buck. For sure. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I, I have only ever used dip pens because I am um, old school from like letter and type design class in college yeah. with calligraphy and there is a definite spring to this. Yeah, and it's like butter. It's it's just Compared very. To a dip pen. But I mean, I can't believe that I can turn this on the side and get the line quality. I'm curious. I'm gonna flip it to see kind of. Okay, so this is a little small. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I can get some like super fine. If I don't want the ink to kind of spread quite as fast, I can flip it over and get some super fine detail going into there. This is nice. Um, I really liked that other pen. The what did you say it was, Katie? The bigger one, the the Rockwell. The Rockwell. I liked the heft. I did too. But I really like this. Is like the balance on this one is really fantastic. It's uh because there's some weight back here. You can post the cap yeah. in this little in this little cap, um, and it and it kind of falls nice and kind of makes it so you can kind of. Uh, for lack of a better term, float out the kind of the control of the of the um, nib. Sorry, I'm I'm a little bit uh, excited about this, so I'm kind of words. So, how do you feel that this compares to a dip pen in both weight and flexibility? Uh, it's way more flexible than a dip pen. Um, a dip pen, all your weight is in the tip, for the most part, right? The tip and up in here. It's very front heavy, right? For most of the holders, yes. That would be fantastic, Katie. Good order. Um, dip pens, too. Look at, look at how much I've been working. Have I had to reload it once? No. That's the nightmare of the dip pens. Dip pens are nice for kind of, I guess, that zen working, but... Keep in mind, we're talking about this as immediate drawing, right? We're wanting to just, we've got 20 minutes to kind of come in and play. And then all of a sudden you got a dip pen and you got to get your ink ready and you got to be dipping back and forth. And if you let it sit too long, it's just kind of drying in the nib and, and all that. Oh, this was, I, I thought you meant a normal dip pen. This is the it's fancy right. one. <laughs> the glass pen. We'll, we'll do a show on this, but look at. It is glass blown. That is red glass in there. But it's cardinal. When you dip it, it goes all the way up on these crazy spirals. Can you get in any closer mm -hmm. on that? You can get in real close if you hold it. If you guys don't mind putting like the page link to this, because they're they weren't supposed to be in stock. They have five, just came in at stock. the time. Well, I know, but I, I wanted them, and then they they came in stock after we did not have time to get one ordered in. So how pretty is that? It's so pretty. So this is unlike a regular traditional nib, unless it's got that kind of, what's the thing on the back, Amanda, that in a traditional nib has that kind of metal piece on the back with some nibs, like the calligraphy nibs where it holds up extra ink. Oh yeah, I don't remember. I don't know what it's called. But this is kind of nice because it's almost a, a, a replacement for that. So you'll dip it in and the ink will be all on it and then you can draw. So we'll use that in another. Thing, but this is weighted differently, Katie, because it's hand-blown glass. Mm -hmm. um, the weight's right smack in the middle on this one, um, where this this pen it's balanced out, kind of a little bit. The weight's right here, so you can kind of. Then this one, the weight's in the very middle, like here to here. Yeah, that's fine. Well, and this is kind of this is the wood core is a, a very lightweight like wood as opposed to like the plastic or resin ones this is kind of the weights all here and that the that does not have good flex well the reservoir that's it what it's called it is very reservoir um this is this feels so so brittle and uh like i'm worried i would snap the tip on that by comparison to these that's just so much more so much more flexible. Um, let me finish this. Sorry, we got excited about the <laughs> the glass. The, the, those glass dip pens are really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. These are really to, nice parts. 
Mm -hmm. uh, aren't they like 15 bucks or something like that? $14.99? $14.09. Yeah. So if you've never tried a dip pen, that's the, that's the one to give a try to, that's going to hold a little bit more, that has kind of a, a kind of very unusual exterior reservoir. Okay. It's kind of grounding my nest here. It kind of looks like it was floating. It doesn't have a... Any other questions while we're finishing this up? Katie, how are we doing on time? So we don't... 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah, 15 minutes. Okay. All right. Anything anybody else would like to see once this is done? We can get something else or... Something else up here to draw. These I'm going to just... Mix in where this little... I love the lines that makes. It's, this is one's so, so nice. <clears throat> so dynamic. Makes this tip on this makes a very, it, it, it's just really not, you can push it, you can, I mean, you can push mm -hmm. and pull and turn. That other one must have been the biggest tip, the, the largest one, because this is very, this one's very nimble. If that makes any sense. But are you laughing at my mm -mm. choice of words? It is a very nimble little pen. It is. Um, have you did you talk about the ink converter? Uh, as far as did we discuss that there was an ink converter? And that you can fill it with your own ink? Yes. Okay. Uh, because I said that it comes with the black cartridges and then it's got the converter where you can either fill it or you can use, uh, you know, they've got all those different colors of ink that we showed. Do we, do we want to try it? Katie, are there any of those colors of ink still over there from filming? Uh, I think so. We can, we can give you it a... You want to do it? I... Uh, well, we'll find out. <laughs> you should practice the motion before you put it in the ink. You want to show me how to do it? That you're now you know you're scaring me. Camera, but I'll... Now you're scaring me. Well, just you just stand on the side; they can't see. <laughs> also, Bessie would like remember. to know how this type of pen would work on a cotton paper with tooth, as opposed to on a bristle paper. Okay, so we showed some stuff at the, at first of the other nib that I was working with. Um, hold on when she brings the ink a little. Um, let's, let's try, the, yes, that's good. Let's try, and it's very different. Let's, um, so this is the, the Lennox cotton that's made by Legion. This is that pen, that, the one we've been using. And then this was that, the Rockwell. So you can see that because it's cotton and it's going to be, it's a printmaking paper, right? So it's very absorbent. It's a little less clean. See, it's a little fuzzy. It absorbs a little differently where this is very, very clean. So it's something where you would want to give it a try. Uh, let's try it on the, this is the Stonehenge. And that seemed to work really well with that Rockwell. So I just realized oh, that that's nice. for you to change the ink, you're going to contaminate the new one because you have to like clean it all out and stuff and it takes a while. Okay. Well, so maybe we should not. Okay. Well, we can do, uh, maybe we can um, film something and by the end of, maybe by Friday, we can put it on the Facebook live group. We might have videos of that. Though. Okay. Well, we might have videos of that and, and we will if put not, it. If not, we will have some up soon. <laughs> okay. So see, this is, this is, um the craft paper that is made by legion it's the stonehenge craft which is 100 percent cotton it's got a smoother surface so what you're going to want to look for is not so much what what kind of paper you know is it paper pulp is it cotton you're going to want to look at the surface and this has got a little bit of 
texture, but not much. So that gets a really nice, nice clean line to it with minimal skipping for a cotton paper. So like hot press watercolor paper that was cotton would probably work really nicely with this. Um, and this is just, I, I'm really impressed by this paper. This would be a really exciting on illustration board. I, I know that saying illustration board and exciting together seem like a little bit of an oxymoron, but <coughs> don't, don't, uh, don't make fun of my choices, my drawing life choices, substrate life choices. All right. We have any other questions on this? We can try drawing something else for just something different if we want. We have about nine minutes. Okay. Um, Would you say ink, the ink drying time is comparable to like watercolor drying time? Oh no, it's gonna be faster um, than watercolor drying time. That's a, an interesting question. Uh, because it's you're, you're putting down very little, right? Uh, watercolor, you're putting down a wash, and it's it's a lot more fluid all at once, where this is controlled by that nib. It's not going to get fatter than that nib. Even if I sat and just, I'm going to let this soak out for a minute and kind of get a, a really fat line. And then we'll give it a minute. I can see a little bit of shine still here and a little bit of kind of a wet bubble. From that lift we'll give it a minute and then we'll rub our hand over it um it's gonna go quite a bit faster now this is a water soluble ink um how would it hold up if you used it in combination with a watercolor okay so what you would want to do do your watercolor and then put this on over it okay you could do your drawing over the watercolor if you put this on and then you watercolor over it because it's water resistant, not waterproof, it's going to lift some, right? Especially when you're using watercolor, you're putting on a lot more, like we just discussed, lots more watercolor, water in the watercolor than with this ink. Okay, so see, dry. That was the line that I just did. Back here, I glooped something a minute ago. Actually, no, that was on my my hand but see that's that line we just did a minute ago so already dry to the touch i would go on here but i don't want to smear it uh katie if you'll get me do we have a little bit of water anywhere we could try a water brush? doing a little wash oh yeah perfect if you got one that's loaded we can try um just seeing what happens with the nest oh. and putting a little bit of stuff on it why not they make beautiful washes well that's kind of what i'm what i'm wondering that might be kind of fun I never thought I would say a fountain pen is a delight to use, but this is pr <laughs> this is pretty exciting. Ian is asking um, if you would use powders to quick dry the inks. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I, I don't think there's... I, um, I've heard of that before, but there's no reason to... This dries quick enough where I don't see why you would need to quicker dry it. I mean, you could probably just work on it hit it with a, a with a hair dryer if it was somewhat resistant but I mean this is you know we did that waited a minute and then I was able to touch it and nothing came up so I think that's when you're doing like either ink washes or really large areas with brushes and things like that it's not a I don't think it would be a concern with with the fountain pen because it's so much more controlled yay I didn't have a water brush already loaded so but there's water. It's okay. This is one we were using with the video. Okay. You know what? I'm going to. Um, actually, I've got one of my own watercolor brushes right here. Go for it. That's squirrel. So I, I, I'm used to this one. So I'm going to just uh, use that because I know how wet or dry this is really easily. Okay. So I just did a little bit in there. Let's, first, let's take this one that we drew the line on. Okay. See how that picks it up a little bit? Ooh, that's pretty. This is the first one we did that we rubbed. See how that pulled a little bit off? So see, that doesn't really necessarily, it picks it up, but it still keeps enough line. 
So if you took this, I've got water and I'm going to blot this out. Oh yeah, look at that. Let's do the inside of here. See where this would be really nice, this is just the black, is to use uh, one of those colored inks where you could get those really pretty, you know, lighter washes. Can everybody see how this is? I'm trying to keep it, it's not dry brushed, but it's, I'm trying to minimize how much water I'm putting down to make the paper super wet. This might be really nice for either a watercolor illustration paper or uh, or like watercolor illustration board or hot press where it would be, this is not a very absorbent paper. So I don't feel like this is like really showing washes at their, like the real, what you could achieve with this, but it's still, you can see. Uh, we can take one of the ones that I did on the cotton paper and we can actually take it and see what it'll do too. Uh, although neither of those are sized for watercolor, you know, but um, they were sized for printmaking so they can take some fluid. It's just not going to absorb in as quick as a, or as evenly as a watercolor paper. Ooh. fun. I like this. Can everybody see how that's working? Is it pretty mm -hmm. easy to see? Let's see where I splashed some water here and it's kind of pulled it around some. Simply black? Yep, it's just the one that came with the set, which is the Simply Black, I'm pretty sure, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's try it on that cotton paper just to have a go. So see, obviously you wouldn't want to go over this with watercolor because it's going to lift. Um, unless, I mean, if that's what you're going for, that's, that's fine. That's not a problem. Let's try it on the stem. Wait, that's too right great for a travel journal. Oh yeah. Yeah, because you could get that little bit of wash if you want. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So these are dry from, from before. So let's see. So this is if you've, you know, done some drawings and want to go back and do... And this is that smoke. Oh, yeah, look at that. Ooh. I chihuahua. Look at that. That's nice because you could even do a spot and then actually take that to do some on a scrap piece. Pick up the ink. Pick up the, or, you know, pick up your ink and then come over here. Do something with that. Then go back over it once it's dry with your pen. Right? So you do the wash and then the mm -hmm. actual... Uh, drawing over it, that would be really fun. Oh, that's a lovely color. So, fun stuff. Fun stuff. So it functions very nicely just, just drawing. It functions nicely with washes. They're super this is just super quality. This, is, this one's nice and brushed. Are all the Victorias brushed? Do you remember? They were solids, but it was a matte finish. There's it's a, kind of like a... Sil there's silver, and then there's like a um, gunmetal. Gun metal. Yeah. And there's purple acrylic and blue acrylic? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then same thing. Yeah. There's a that yes. color, and then it's a brushed silver. A brushed silver, yeah. So, um, so the two styles. So that's, uh, yeah. So you got the cap pops on. 
you have this one for those of you like me who are really awesome at losing things. It's your superpower. All right, do we have any last questions? Because it's about that time, seems like. Which brush was that that you were just using? Uh, it is just a brush that I have here. I think that it's an old Charvin one that we carried. It's a squirrel mop yeah. though, right? It's a, yeah, it's a little squirrel mop. Uh, this is the exact, okay, so I think the reason we stopped carrying these is because we came out with the um, Danube, which this is, this is very soft and pliable and it doesn't go back to keep a nice point. The Danube has squirrel, the black squirrel in it, Kazan squirrel, but then it also has a very um, soft yet really responsive synthetic. So it has a little bit of snap back. So it gives you um, a little bit tighter tip play and some snap to a style brush that usually once it gets really overwhelmed with water can be kind of squashy and unwieldy. So these were ones that we carried and then we developed the Danube. So they're in there somewhere because I know we've I know, got know, a yeah, bunch of them. We have so many um, <laughs> and these were, these were ones that, that I had that were my favorites. Then we came out with the Danube and these have been relegated to a travel water <laughs> set. So that tells you what I think of the other ones. I actually think that's the little one that came with the little Charvin ink set with the little... This no? was in my, my Sennelier uh, watercolor set when Andrew was here the oh, other was day. It? Yeah, it was in my tray and we took it out. So, um, yep. It was just set, he set it over there and that was, I was like, ah, oh, there's a brush. Yeah. Alrighty I've then. Right here. Huh? That seems to happen a lot. Yeah, right there's here. lots of things sitting everywhere. So, oh, and so I remember these that we've shown before, the leather sketchbooks, because this is that old world handmade paper. I totally wanted to try it with that big pen. I drew Waldo, and you know, the scarf that you made me, Amanda, he, he had a very bad night and he oh. learned that he, um, that he wasn't, uh, oops, here we go. He, the two of his points got taken away because of something that happened with AKC and, and got awarded to our friend's dog. And so we were told, we took a picture and said he was incognito because he was very depressed. So he Amanda, like ET Amanda, he does, he did. <laughs> Amanda made him this beautiful, or made me this beautiful scarf and I put it on him as a joke and we took pictures. So, so yeah, so that was with the pen. So I had a lot of fun with this paper. This paper worked here. Show that again, Katie worked fantastic with you can use it on the side i mean look at the spiral control with that pen and that was with the rockwell one that although i like it i like the victorian better so now i get to take that and yeah so yes such is the life of a crazy dane studios dog they end up in a sketchbook somewhere dd all right, well, next week is our oil studies episode. It is. So we are going to focus on that same thing, that immediate work. You're in the studio. You have a panel. We are not going to prime it. We are not going to do a drawing. We are going to have the paint, and we are going to go from there. So we're going to the, the, the goal. We're going. We're going to have a goal of doing one small painting right here and I'll find something around here. And I mean, I, you know what I had to let you guys do? You guys can pick. You guys each pick an item, can be whatever, and then we'll pick one and we'll do the artwork from that. So that it's, I don't know what's gonna happen, so then it's a challenge. It makes it even more like if you were in your studio and just had a few minutes, okay? Are we down for that? Yeah. All right, that's what we're doing next week. So you guys have a wonderful evening again. If you want to follow us on Facebook, we've got a private group, Jerry's Live. <laughs> Go in group, search for Jerry's Live. Yes, Amanda? We uh, had to do a sorry, Kitty. clean sweep of everybody who was pending invitations. Okay. So if you were not, if you tried if, to get in and weren't, redo it. Yes, if you tried to get in and you didn't answer that question, guess what? You were on hold somewhere in, in artistic Limbo. Jerry's group purgatory. So that's all been wiped out you need to reapply make sure you answer that question we've got 3600 plus members strong lots of sharing lots of cool artwork lots of great questions 
Um, and, and I think all of us are on in there pop up once in a while. Even Will has. So, so right there, you got your Will access. But, um, but yes, consider that. Uh, and uh, we will see you guys next week. Take care.